Okay. Do you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So first of all, good evening. Welcome everyone to a quick quick seminar. I'm going to share over here the link which we put out or it should have been in the email to go to to download the software. The software which we're doing is going to be the accountant version desktop of 2020. So I'm going to, if you click on this link, you, know, you copy and paste it into your browser. That'll be step one. Some of you might have done that already. Some of you uh, tried to, uh, we didn't do it yet. Copy and paste this link into your browser. Um, actually, I have to go back um, a second here. Um, we do this down. If I, so basically, you go, um, I'm not even sure how you would um, copy a shared screen. But if you could, it's downloads.quickbooks.com slash app QB. It's Q, QuickBooks Desktop. That's what that stands for. QB, QBDT products. I believe you have this already in your emails. Let's see here. What's going on in the podcast? Okay, if you would copy that into your browser, you would go over to um, QuickBooks. Let's see what we are over here. Oh, Levy, they're making a good point. If you paste the, the link in the chat and the Q. Oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I think I did that last time. Okay, we're going to US. Yeah, so let me get back into the thing over here. QA. Oh, so someone did that already for me. <laughs> Thank you, Judith. Let's see. I think I want things are moving, things move fast here. Okay. So you have here the link and the and the Q and A. You if you you would you would get a prompt as a US or is it UK? You go US and we would go down to they probably have a question here. Let's get to know you in need. Or using the multiple multiple computers, and the answer is no. We're not using the multiple multiple computers. Or you could skip the question and go to standard setup, which I'm going to do, and we'll bring you to the next page. Standard setup, United States. Now the assumption is you've bought it already because you have the license. What you need to get is a software. So you have United States. The drop down will be QuickBook QuickBooks Desktop Accountant. I'm gonna leave it over the drop down here so you can see QuickBooks Desktop Accountant. One of the wonderful features of a QuickBooks Desktop Accountant is that it lets you open up two files, two QuickBooks files at the same time. Other, so the same thing will also be with the enterprise, but other like the Premiere and Pro would only let you open up one file. So we have the accountant version and we're gonna go of course to Accountant 2020. Yeah, see that 20, 21 came out. Uh, we'll probably be using that in the next uh, course, but most of the features that you're going to have, 99% of them are already here in the 2020, and there's much to learn over here. So we have here again, United States, QuickBooks, Desktop Accountant, and we're taking the Accountant 2020. It's going to search and it's going to show you to download, and you download it to probably your default download folder. Um, you see in the bottom left corner, it's already showing uh, the .exe file. So I'm going to let it run, even though I have it installed. For the benefit of those who don't, I'm going to assume, by the way, that um, some I know people. Some people are more advanced. Some people are still more beginners. I'm going to assume that no one knows anything, and you'll forgive me if you, you, think, you know. But that's the way we we're going to we're going to run this program. And, you know, for the sake of, it's always, you always learn something new during review. And so right now you have the bottom left corner, we have this exe file downloading. And when it finishes downloading, we're going to double click on it and install it. There's actually a whole tutorial over here, how to install QuickBooks desktop. And they say you have to locate the downloaded setup file on your computer. 
but in many cases, if you're using Chrome or other uh, internet browsers and you're still in the same session, you'll just see it in the bottom left corner or the bottom center. And it says here, you have to keep your license and product code handy. When you launch the setup, you should keep it handy because you can install it unless you have it. And to differentiate the license is a long string of numbers with a couple hyphens in the middle. And the license and the product code is be a six digit number. I see this in participants way, uh, raising hands. Let's see what the issue is here. Okay, I see Shimon has a question, but in general, we're using the Q&A. Um, Chris with that accountant, 2020. I believe this, when you receive the license code, you might have been told that that's the, what you're downloading. I see someone saying, it's not letting me download without the license number. I'm not sure. I just didn't ask me that. Is anyone else having the same problem that uh, Mrs. Salman is having that you can't download the software without a license? Okay. Um, depending on your internet connection, it'll take between uh, two to five minutes to download. Shouldn't take more. I'm more than halfway downloaded on this Wi-Fi connection. Again, um, for the last couple of posts on the Q&A, we have, if you scroll further up, earlier up, you have the actual link to go to. This was posted by Judith and myself about uh, five minutes ago. And the answered, it's already answered. So you have to look not at the open questions, but at the answered questions. The first question that's, that's at, from the first answered questions at 8.15, we posted the link and we skipped the step of multiple computers. We just want the standard setup. Mm -hmm. Levy, are you sure everyone sees the Q&A? They could see that? Maybe copy the link and post it in the chat. Is that- With the, the, the Q&A, they can. Everyone, everyone just a QA. and a You just go to the answered question. That's what I just said. Just, at 8.15, it's posted. I'll do it again in the chat. Um, chat. Who's raising their hands? Where did the chat run away? Here, chat. We'll post it here as well. So now you have it in the chat at 822. Copy the whole link as one, as one piece. And you right click your mouse after you, you highlight it. Again, you highlight it by holding down your left button and you right click and you copy. And then you post it into your browser. Okay, I'm gonna open another tab. You'll put it in, and if you uh, control V or you right click, it'll tell you paste. I just want to make a comment. I see someone's asking about a license number. Anyone that registered before 12:30 today, we sent out one by one to every single person uh, a license. Some people that registered last minute, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get you the license number. There was a few people that signed up a little late. We'll have to get that to you tomorrow. Unfortunately, I can't. You're going to have to just watch what's going on here right now, and tomorrow we'll get you the license number. But for anyone that signed up, um, we sent it to you just today throughout the afternoon. We we sent one by one to each and every single one of you your unique license number. Levy, there's some questions coming in on the chat saying that I have a license, but it's not working. My product number isn't working. I, I'm well, not so that sure. I didn't. Okay, right now I'm going to the next step. Assuming now by now I downloaded, as I see on my computer, my bottom left corner. Let me see if you, uh, people. One second. What, um, that's why I have a second thing here to show. Okay, so you see here on my bottom left corner, 
there's a this is what happened when I download. I'm gonna double click on this. And this is gonna start running the installation. So I didn't explain yet how to put in the, 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 the code in the installation. Let's see if um, how it's gonna run. So the software starts loading up in the background. Um, my instructor, uh, when I learned that they compared this to a plane taking off. So when you go into QuickBooks to see those it takes time. Doesn't, doesn't uh, the startup always takes time, but then hopefully you make it up in the air, as they say. Um, there's installation in the background. Okay. Let me see if I could share now this other screen. Mm. Okay. Um, if, you, if you're here, there's a a pop-up that says QuickBooks, uh, do, you, do you allow the computer to, the, the, the following program to make changes to the computer, it's into it. You have to click yes. Right now at this stage, it doesn't show me that I could sh share that screen. That's a software installation. So see new share. Let me see, now I could show this window, okay. So you should be seeing now the screen here if you click yes, that you want to into it to connect to work in your hard drive, it says welcome to the install shield wizard. Okay, one second, Levi. I see a lot of people commenting they're having trouble. I, I, I just want to comment to all of you. I, we, we've, we've done this course a few times. Unfortunately, for some people, because of the settings of your computer, sometimes you have unique circumstances where things don't run exactly as you're seeing. We'll try to give you some basic guidance now. If, if you don't succeed tonight, you'll have to and reach out to us tomorrow. We could try to troubleshoot with you. I mean, basically, as you see Levy doing it right now, that's that's really how it should run. And it, it shouldn't, you shouldn't have hiccups. So uh, it's hard, again, it, just because of the way technology works and the way people's individual computers are set up, sometimes there's issues. Try to follow along as best as you can. For most of you, it should should work. Um, we're having a bunch of people saying something of that, it's, Levy, it's not incorrect product number for me. When I enter license, and uh, I don't know, people, we have three okay, people saying so, it, 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 so, so they're going ahead. So I'll tell you what, it, I'm gonna see in, in a minute, actually, I didn't uninstall the 2020 that I have here. I, I was just getting them to this point where they can enter in the password. So I'm just gonna press next and see what happens. It's, it's extracting and it's gonna, I'll see what it's gonna give me here. So to the best of my knowledge, um, and I'm gonna look into it again tomorrow, if, if there's even one person that has it right, please let me know. This should be the 2020 accountant uh, desktop and it's uh, the product codes and license are matching it. Um, it's always possible people have something off, but I see so far people have problems. Is there anyone that sees that it's working? It takes time it extracts files. This is the release number eight. And again, not, uh, not always in this class, we actually go through the installation process, we give you directions, but we're gonna make an attempt to walk you through the installation. So from here on, everything should go smoother. Again, this is one of our COVID challenges. If we were working in a lab, we would have all the computer the laptops pre-installed with the software. Okay, the shared window is closed. Let's see what's going on here. Because now open up in the window. Let's see here. Okay. Now, welcome to QuickBooks. Now I'm having another screen here. Let's see here. If I could share the screen. Um, new share. Where is it? So I'm gonna stop share and share screen. Okay. Okay, on my screen, which I which I'm attempting to share, and it says I'm starting to share screening. 
screen share. There's a welcome to QuickBooks right now. I'm not sure why it's not coming through on your end. Like I said, sometimes certain windows of software is not a shareable. Um, it's, it's not a shareable um, screen. Perhaps in one, at some time we could make a video and you could share a video of the installation process. But right, I'm trying to share as many screens as possible. Um, what's a Q and A say here? Okay, this is a Windows program, not a Mac, I believe. How oh, to install it? It's not working. Okay. Um, hey, lady, thank you for bringing that up, by the way. And we really yeah. should have, that's something we should have told every one of you. Yeah. The desktop, the QuickBooks software will only work on a Windows. For those of you that are trying to install this on a Mac, it's not going to work. Okay, uh, let me see if I can try one more time sharing this one, the screen. Uh, share screen. Okay, right now my screen, it's showing me license and product numbers again. I'm, I'm, I have a second device in front of me to mimic what you'll be seeing. And the message that I get is that I have started to screen share, but what, I, what I'm screen sharing is not coming through. I don't know why. Um, this could potentially be a safety feature for software. Because anything, I'm, I, if I share another screen right now, for example, um, see, that doesn't seem to have a problem. Let's see, here. see, I just shared something and it went through. The software, some of the software pages are not going through for some reason. Anyway. Um, I guess the objective between now and the next class will be to get the software installed. Um, to keep the momentum going, I feel that if we get right into the program and deal with some of the technicalities later, it'll be more interesting. Let me see one more thing here. Okay, now the license number is individual to the user. So that's not like I could pass around a license number. The product code is actually, the same license for everyone, the same product for everyone because it's the same software, but the licenses are individual. So I'm gonna, right now, I'm gonna back out of my installation because it doesn't seem like I could share it anyway. Um, let me go over to right now to the, uh, the other presentation, which I've appeared here. To give you a little background of where QuickBooks come into the picture. I wasn't actually planning for tonight, but we'll, we'll make use of the time. Mm -hmm. Second here. In my quick, okay. Teams. Okay. Is that working here? Yeah. 
Give me a second. Thank you. Maybe, maybe we should just skip this now and just do the presentation. And we'll I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to put the pull it up right now. That's exactly what I'm doing. Let's save there on my computer. We'll pull it up over here. Um, QuickBooks presentation. Scroll down. Welcome to QuickBooks. Here we go. Okay, and present. Okay. Share screen. Okay, so this was actually the same link that we had last time in our presentation. Welcome to QuickBooks. Okay, so as uh, Robert Wardy said earlier that uh, the purpose of the QuickBooks course is the companies have to keep track of the books. Everyone wants to know um, for tax purposes or for financial purposes for to run the company. They wanna know, should they stay in business? Are they making money? keep track of the money, keep track of who owes the money. And this, th these are all the books. And QuickBooks is the modern day, it's not actually a book, it's just a piece of software. It's called the books as we'll discuss because in, uh, many years ago before the computer started or even the beginning days of computers, there were actually physical books that would be, would be in a store. We have over here, example, let's move down to the next slide. Topics to be discussed over here. We'll discuss the navigation and settings in QuickBooks. We're gonna discuss QuickBooks chart of accounts. The chart of accounts is actually the core of QuickBooks. Um, every entry that you put in is automatically needs to be assigned an account. If you don't put an account, you might get away temporarily with putting in like ask me accountant or putting a dummy account like uncategorized, but you need to put an account because the accounts are actually what breaks up all the types of expenses and income by category. So this is the categories of incomes and expenses. It's also the categories of things that you own and they stay around for a long time, which we'll get to discuss. We'll discuss the QuickBooks transactions. Every th entry that's put into QuickBooks is called a transaction, whether it's an invoice, whether it's uh, which an invoice is the term which is used when you bill a customer. There are bills, that's the term that you use when you enter what you receive from a vendor. A bill, does, you do banking, or within, you could do within QuickBooks. Um, you, could, you, you could download the transactions into your QuickBooks, whether it's from, from the actual uh, checking account, savings account, credit cards, all this information could be electronically downloaded and imported into your QuickBooks. Alternatively, if, if you write out checks in QuickBooks and you print it out on paper, that's done within QuickBooks and you, you'll be doing at the end of the month or depending on the size of your company more often or less often, you'll be reconciling your bank statements with your QuickBooks to make sure they're in sync with each other. We have customers and sales. So besides the actual invoice, there's also a whole database within QuickBooks where you create customers. You have to put their information. You could have email addresses so you can email invoices directly from within QuickBooks. You don't have to print out an invoice or save a PDF and then attach it. You could do this all within QuickBooks. And the same thing is with the vendors and expenses. You could... Um, Vendors is the bills that you receive from them. You can enter in and you can put an email there because there are times that that vendor could be someone who's purchasing something from you. In some ways, he sells you items. You could sell him items. And we're going to discuss, discuss the expenses. In addition to creating customers, 
we also have to create items that you sell, whether it's your services, whether it's your merchandises. So there's customers and sales. Everything needs to be created at least the first time. Once you have the customer in the system, he could be reused. The same thing with an item. Once you create that item, it could be reused for other people. Um, when you get to, to inventory, then it's not reused. Then you have to either, you know, if you, get, if you receive an, an, an expensive item, which you're keeping track of, so as you sell it, it's going down. And QuickBooks is going to keep track of your inventory. And if you have 100 items, you sell 20, you should only have 80. And you shouldn't be able to, it'll give you, it should give you a message when you're selling below zero that you have to reorder. You can even put in reminders when, at what point you want it to remind you to reorder. If you don't want to, you know, be out of stock and back ordered and it's item which moves, you might tell them, put a message into QuickBooks. Okay, when I drop to 25, let me reorder. So by the time it comes in, I'll, I'm down to five, I'm not, never really missing a sale because a lost sale could be a customer lost also, not just a sale. Anyway, these are all, this is a general, general overview. Every item we're gonna discuss in detail as we go through it. If inventory, you also could do employees and payroll within QuickBooks. Um, today, most companies delegate their, they give over the payroll to payroll companies because there's, unless you're advanced and you're a big company, it might be worth it to do in-house, but for small companies and for the expertise needed for it, it's usually beneficial to build, give it to payroll company, but still, at, um, you know, we're not gonna do it um, in great detail, but we're gonna get an overview over employees and payroll because that is an important feature within QuickBooks. And you might be in the company which wants you to have that skill and knowing that, you know, will make you more employable. And always, there's always things you can learn on the job. So this will be another one where you get, you'll get more exposure while you're there. And we also have QuickBooks adjustments which, we'll, which we're not gonna get into right now. <clears throat> then we also have reports, which reports is ultimately, that's gonna give you your, your overview of the company. If you had put in your customers and sales and you put in your expenses, when you make a report, you will have two, several types of reports. The two most popular ones are your P and L, which is your profit and loss, as well as your balance sheet, is what is the net worth of the company. And we'll, discuss the balance sheet more in detail in the following slides. Okay, so chapter one we have over here. I'm gonna take a pause for a second. I'm not sure if anyone had questions of what I said so far. Uh, gen generally, usually the class runs about an hour and 15 to, to hour 25 minutes. And I stop you know, from time to time to answer questions. And then there's a 40 minute Q and A at the end. And hopefully we ought to be out of here by 10 o'clock after Q&A, it's not mandatory to be there for the last uh, section of time. However, it's recommended because there are many things, this items of discussion which, which come up and you can, I always say you can always benefit from it. Um, so I'm looking here at, okay. So someone's here in a different time zone. I see, or the computer, 11.25 PM, okay. Um, I don't see any questions here on what I said so far, so I'm gonna move on to the next slide. So the books, there are many types of books in it within a company. Um, we have here first called the general journal, which is uh, just a term book of original entry. Uh, the, you, you could just forget that second one, it's called the general journal. The term will come up in QuickBooks in the drop down and some in the counted version the software, you actually have a general journal two places under the company and under the accountant. And the journals we'll discuss later on is the, in the, the early days when people would run a business, they would have one big book and they would write like a diary of everything which happens during the day. That's how they would keep track of what happens. <clears throat> I know some third world countries, maybe in some off the books stores also that keep track they, on, on paper. They make sales and the, everything which goes on, they, they sell an item, they make a payment, they write out a check, they receive money. Everything is put into that book because 
the at the time they only when the one's busy in the store, customers come and go, and they can deal with one book. You can't deal with five different books, but as you'll we'll see soon, why it's necessary to have five different books, especially for a busy business. So they would have this fat book, and sometimes it was you know volume one, volume two, volume three. It could be several volumes for one year. They're right, you know, uh, if, if if they purchased. The, the truck came and made a delivery today with 10 cases of milk. They're gonna write down and receive 10 cases of milk. If they paid for it right away, they would write out a check and they would say in the same diary, we wrote out a check. Later on, if they, if they didn't write a check, they write, it was on account. They wouldn't have it on a check. And that's how they'll keep track of, their, of, of what goes on in the store. And then at the end of the day, before they went home, they'll close the store and they'll sit down and they'll try to make sense of everything which happened during the day when no one's bothering them. So this is where the general ledger came into play. The general ledger was divided into a number of accounts, which is called AR, accounts receivable, accounts payable. I mean, if someone wanted to sit down his company and see just all the people that owes him money, you know, 100 customers came in today and bought different types of things, you know, how many of them paid for him or how many didn't pay? So he just wants to know right now, how, you know, whoever paid, he has a bunch, he has money in his register. He has money in his safe, in his lockbox, wherever it is. He wants to know who are the people he has to chase down. And the, today there were like 300 transactions that went through. He doesn't want to go through everything. So, and, and, and chances are he's not going to get all the money this today and tomorrow. So he wants to have it in one place. He'll pull up maybe eight or nine names that happened during the day to owe him money. And he's going to write this into his account receivable ledger. And he's really using what's called a subsidiary ledger, which is, by what we mean is ABC. Every customer has their own name. Every, so this, he's, he's putting on to every customer. You see, sometimes you go into a store, they have these little mini boxes by ABC. They, you know, they write down on, 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 a, on, a, on a index card. They're writing down people, what they owe them. Or if they made a payment, they write down the index card. And they put this all into the subsidiary ledger, which I'm using this term, but they just call it a customer ID. So now they have all the people that they know they have to chase for money. If they want to know, in general, what's the total amount owed to them from all the customers, so that's a general accounts receivable account. Now, this is, some of this might seem redundant information or not necessary in QuickBooks, but QuickBooks runs in a similar fashion. I ha I'll give you in, in your reports, I'll give you a general accounts receivable, but the only way to make accounts receivable is for each item that had to be connected to a customer. If you want, you can't just enter account receivable, I'm owed money. You have to choose a customer, which I'm calling here a subsidiary ledger or, or, or individual customers. Same things with account payable. You know, you have, uh, you have 100 people coming, say you owe them money, or you're going to go back to your diary, or you did it as you went along, you took your diary and you filtered out who you owe money to and you wrote it down. If anyone who's asking you for money, you don't have, you don't believe you owe them, you can ask them, show me a bill, show me an invoice, prove it, and show me the day. You go back in your ledger and say, I don't have it here. And then you have to discuss who's right. Did you forget to write it down or that he didn't? But people like to know in general how much money they are owed and how much money they owe people. And they can know, you know if the business is doing okay. Then they would have what's called cash receipts and, or sales receipts. Cash receipts is money received. Sales, um, sale, which was which could be for a current sale or an old sale. Let me move this here out of my, uh, move this back up to the top. Okay, this is bar out of the way. Okay. Um, then they'll have inventory to keep track. Again, as I showed you, QuickBooks will merge them all into one book and when you'll, learn the, when, you'll, when, you, when you'll see some of the back end of QuickBooks, you'll see that they're, that they're using all these types of different types of books. There's a thing called fixed assets, which are items which you own, whether it's a house, whether it's a car, whether it's a, whether, whether it's a, a machinery, and it doesn't get used up, it's, it sticks around for many years. And then there's payroll ledgers. These are all different types of books companies would have. Just to get an example, this was what I called the general journal. And we've been credit. Now, this is the book which we citation where we took it from. They would write down the day and they would have to write down 
the account title. Uh, this, this is what I told you is called the chart of accounts. They're writing, what is it? Is it an expense? Is it income? You have to write down information about it and you have to write about debit and credits, which we'll get to at another time. But it will either be on the right side or the left side. And everything was written in double format because as, we'll, as you'll see, every one account affects a second account. That's the, 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 fa the father of modern day accounting created it that way. It's called the double method of accounting, which, we'll dis which we might get to discuss later on. So this was their diary. And they would have what's called post-reference. Post-reference of PR is when they would transfer their diary out to the various books. They have to check it off so they know that it was taken care of. If there was no check here, it means that they didn't transfer it. This is what a uh, filled out um, diary would look like. You have here a general journal, for example, they would say, okay, we got cash. So when they receive cash, for example, just to give them, elaborate to explain this scenario and see if I could make this. Um, I hope you can see it's a little bigger. Okay, it's okay. So yeah, we're gonna zoom in this. So someone put in cash into a company of $10,000. If the company got it, someone made an investment. So it's affecting a capital account, which is equity. So now we're keeping track of the money that came into the company and whether this money that came in was a loan, which is a liability or it's a, an investor, which someone is getting equity in the company. Let's see, there's a general ledger. This is the ledger which, is, which would transfer everything over. And this is the, again, this is the journal. This is where we put the diary. Now we're gonna fill up the ledger. So they put in GJ, which came from the general journal and they crossed the, here it is a, a post reference that they 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 received it, and here's where they check it off. So the showing this entry which I told you about the ten thousand dollars cash that I put in needs to be put into two places, right? So the ledger it goes into two different books. The cash comes out into the cash ledger, and the other ten thousand dollars would have to go into an equity account which we're not showing here. So those are the books. And we're going to give a few uh, an overview of accounting concepts, which really um, we'll go into more detail in class, you know, three if we have already the some entries in the QuickBooks. You'll appreciate it more when you see the examples we're putting in. But we, we're going to we're going to give you a general overview, and over time we have to reinforce it. You know, when I gave the you know previous course, people asking. Um, you know, about the debits and credits, how long does it take them to, to, to get it, as, as they say? And it's just by reviewing it and reviewing it and reviewing it. So there's one general equation which you have to know, because uh, which, which is called the assets equals liabilities and owner's equity. This is the balance sheet, in essence, in, in, one, in one sentence. The value of the company, the top part will be the assets, what the company owns, whether it's, it's the Anything of value which a company has, that's the definition, right? Something of value that the business owns, that's called an asset. What are examples of assets? Okay, here we just put it in short, A equals L plus OE, which is really on the top. Assets equals liabilities and owner equity. As a, even if you're, you're a bookkeeper, not an accountant, but you're gonna be asked to make reports and you're gonna make sense of the reports. And usually there are two parts. There's the invoices, there's the, the bills and the payments, as we said before, those are things which QuickBooks handles automatically. But the general journals are the things which you put in manually. And you have to get a clear understanding of both sides of the equation, what goes where. Because one is gonna be, as we're gonna learn later on, is gonna go on the left side, one's gonna go on the right side. And you can't have two entries on the same side of the equation. It has to be two different sides of the equation and it has to be equal. Uh, to, this, to, the, to, this, to the case which is going on. And maybe now it's not so clear, but we, we hope that it's much clearer as we explain. We have here if A equals L plus OE. For now, skip this, these, these two lines. I'll give you an example. Two equals one plus one, and two equals um, two minus one equals one. It's all the same thing. So whether I look about the total that all the assets that the company owns, everything has its value, 
This company is really nothing, doesn't have anything. How does the company get items? Either the company borrows money, so it has liabilities, or people invested money in the company, or some combination of both. In the case we had before, if the company receives $10,000 from an investor, so then liabilities are zero, right? A is the assets, the company has $10,000. There's no liability because you didn't borrow it from anyone. So A equals zero plus two, which is $10,000. In this case, two equals zero plus two or, two, or two minus zero equals two. That will be the same exact thing. Um, so assets are something which is value which a business owns. You have cash, you can have accounts receivables, you call an inventory. Inventory is things which you want to resell. Supplies, until it's used, it has a value. You buy 10 cases of paper, so you had the company didn't spend all the money yet. It still had a tra it transferred the cash into an item of value called supplies. You can buy furniture, equipment, machinery, vehicles, and land. These are all things which the company has. Um, of course, not only uh, buildings, buildings also go up in value, as a, right? Then you have liabilities. There are bills, you have payroll, which until you pay it, it's a liability. Once you pay it, then it's an expense. You paid it out. Um, you have payroll taxes. So again, until you pay the taxes, it's payable. Once you pay it, it's paid. You have loans, you have bonds, and you have mortgages. These are all things which could have liability in the company. Let me take a pause a second and see if um, we have the crowd is with us here. Um, where's my Zoom? Oh, here. Okay, I don't see any Q&A here. Was there any, let's see in the chat. Okay. So I'm going to continue over here. If, and again, if someone has a question, post it on the Q&A and I'll do my best to answer the questions. In about, a half, about 20 minutes, uh, half an hour, we'll pause and we'll take, we'll open up the question and answer. We'll enable the audio so people could um, ask their questions. Let me get back over here to the slideshow. What was I up to? Okay. Okay, and we had finally liabilities could be lawsuits. Hopefully people don't have lawsuits, but, or, or judgments, these need to be disclosed on the company's books if there's actually a judgment. And I think we went this twice, but it wasn't going further. Okay. Oh, yeah. We can't. Okay. So we have this, we have owners' equity. You can have ca cash capital invested. You can have articles of value invested, and there's also experience. Sometimes someone has experience and he gives experience to the company, and as a result of that, he gets stake in a company. And as they say, you know, the person with money and experience met, and the person with money got experience. Experience got money, and the person with money got experience. Um. Okay. Debits and credits. So debits and credits could get confusing. Again, uh, at the end of the class, I'm going to send that uh, a graph showing samples of debits and credits. You, you're not going to need it for the first two classes, for, for the first class, which we're going to do transactions. But when we're going to do general journal entries, you will need to get an understanding of debits and credits. So. We're gonna give it a little taste now. We're gonna reinforce it next time a little bit. And then hopefully by the third or fourth time, people will become more familiar with it. So you have assets versus liabilities. 
So you have increase, you have debits and credits. Um, the way QuickBooks is going to work when you, if, when I would, we, well, I'll give you an example. Um, I'll, I'll go through this over here. Assets increase with the debit. So if you recall in the previous slide, um, I'm going to take out a presentation mode. When cash was put into the company, the $10,000 is put into the debit. This is representing an asset. Cash is an asset. It increases on the left side, which we call debit. And the owner's equity, in this case capital, it goes up with a credit. So as we explained in the, in the equation, there are two sides. Assets is on one side, liabilities and owner's equity is on the second side. So they are basically like, um, they're an opposite. Well, go, when, when something goes up on the left side, something goes up on, uh, on the other side, goes up on the right side, on the other side of the equation. If something's gonna go down on the right side, right, if I took cash out of a company when I write a check, so it's gonna go down on the credit side and the capital or is gonna go out on the left side. Sounds a little confusing, but it's gonna make a lot of sense as we go on. There can only be one right and one left. They can't both be on the left side, you know, the, so we're gonna, you're gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you a copy of these two graphs over here to be able to study them. But I'm gonna go through the explanation now and then I'm gonna send the PDF out after the class. So let's go back to one line at a time. In this case here, we have here the assets versus liabilities. Assets go up with a debit, as I just showed you, and assets decrease with the credit. When you put money into a company, if I had to put it in as a, as a general general entry, because it didn't go into the bank, let's say someone put in money, but it didn't go to the bank. He, he, pay, he paid directly an expense. You know, you had to buy a car, to, the company didn't have a, a, an account yet. So let's uh, say Ruvain took a, a $10,000 check and bought a car for the company. So the company got $10,000 as cash, but didn't go to the bank account. It went out right away and it became a, became a car. So in, in this case, actually, you wouldn't even put cash on the company side. Your asset will be a car and the capital will be the money that the guy put in. Liabilities increase with credits, right? It's the reverse of assets. Assets increase with a debit. Liabilities increase with a credit. Liabilities decrease with debits. Again, if assets decrease with the credit, liabilities decrease with the debit. Owner's equity is going to follow the liability side because, again, we said assets equals liabilities and owner's equity. Now, let's put an example income. Income, we say here, is going to increase with the credit. Why is it increasing with the credit? Because the effect of income brings up the value of the company, right? The, the owner, if a person has his own company, that's the first company which we're gonna create in QuickBooks as an LLC. And LLC is basically the, the owner. So when money comes in, we make sales, his value goes up. That's owners of equity. So that's increase with the credit because it's the opposite of an asset. Assets increase with debits, income, which is owner's equity, increases with the credit and therefore increase income decreases with the debit because it's similar to liabilities. Liabilities decrease with the debit. And expenses, which is like a, the opposite of income. So it's the opposite of owner's equity. So that, that was going to follow the second, the left side of the equation because it's the it's the opposite of the right side, so it equals the left side. Expenses increase with debits, expenses decrease with credits. Again, the purpose of these debits and credits is not to, so much to confuse you, it's to give you an overview of, of really how QuickBooks works. Um, but this is really QuickBooks stage two, which um, 
the absence of actually working with input books today, we're doing this, you know, this presentation. And like I said, debits is on the left and assets increase, expenses increase, right? We said asset expenses goes back to assets because it's the opposite of owner's equity. Liabilities go down, income goes down, which is equity goes down. And then the credits on the right side, right? Credits is on the right, and that's why we have on the right side of the slide. Assets decrease, expenses, expenses decrease, liabilities increase, income increases, equity increases. And there'll be a third way how to look at it. You see assets equals liabilities equals equity. And you see over here how owner's capital is equity. And you have revenue matches the top because revenue goes up and in the same way the, the, the capital goes up, you get more revenue, the capital goes up. But the debits are the reverse. And that's why the debits of equity are underneath the assets. And then you have plus and minus. This is enough confusion for this part. Um, let me go back here. I'm going to show you just for a second before I go with the Q&A, an actual QuickBooks, just to see what, what I was just talking about here. Um, where's the second one here? Okay, we have here, I'm gonna share the screen called the window is invalid. Okay, let's wait till it actually wakes up. Yeah, let's now. Share screen. Screen. Okay. One second. We do it all. QBW. Okay. We open up this. I'm opening up a sample of a QuickBooks file. I actually have here desktop 2020. QuickBooks account that. Count that as a twenty twenty. Okay. So I have here open the company called We Do It All. This is actually the uh, sample of the company which we're going to create working together in class. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make a new one, but right now I'm gonna set you an example here. Um, I told you before they can have make general general entries. They can find the drop down on the company. You can find it also under the drop down in accountant because there are general entries that are made by you know, routine, routinely, routinely in the company. And then there's sometimes end of year adjustments or in the middle of the year where it's very complex an accountant will make a general general entry. And just to, bring, just to uh, make what we spoke about a little more realistic, uh, the debits and credits. The, the, the debits and credits are Negea for the general general entries, um, primarily, let's say here. So I'm gonna have here a screen which shows debits and credits. Debits on the left side, credits on the right. Um, but that's the drop down menu over here. We have bank accounts, 
we have assets, we have income, we have cost of goods, we have expenses. So every transaction we're going to do, we're going to have to choose an account because otherwise, how does QuickBooks deal with it? Or not, for example, if I'm going to make a report, this is, again, this is general overview of what the benefit of QuickBooks is, and hopefully by the next class, we'll do actual transactions. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm stopping in the next time in five minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so if I would make, for example, a profit and loss report for this year, go to this year, uh, this fiscal year, how will QuickBooks know to prepare that I had advertising expense? If I, if when I put in the transaction, I didn't write that it's an advertising expense. When I put in a transaction, whatever, whatever it will be, and this will be in the next class, I would choose that I made an advertising dollars that is why when I make a report, I'll have an actual advertising expense of 250. So QuickBooks is not going to let you make items unless you put an account. Again, sometimes an acceptable thing is to put uncategorized, but that again, that is a conscious de decision which you have to get back to. But you have to choose an account when you make an entry. And again, you're going to have to choose something on the left side, something on the right side. And you have to know what belongs on the left side. So if you're making an entry which belongs on an asset side, then most likely you'll be entering on the other side something which is a liability or an equity or what we call a shift in assets, which is you, you changed one for another. But this requires getting an understanding of what, um, how the debits and credits work when you, and, and that we're gonna to get to in the greater detail, class three, four, five. Again, my, my goal in the next class hopefully is that we should be able to make transactions. And once we have transactions, we'll be able to deal with it and understand what are debits and credits. That's why what I, I tell people, you see what you see in QuickBooks is stage one, but you, the, the background of QuickBooks is really, um, all, everything boils down to debits and credits, but that's for the Mavinim. As you see over here, um, what was this? Okay, I highlight this thing here. You'll see that every transaction really can be broken down to a debit and a credit. And this was all from a simple advertising expense, but that's, if, if, um, I don't want to get, I don't want to get lost in the accounting aspect. I want to get you involved in bookkeeping, which is keeping track of the sales and the expenses and the, and the bills and the invoices that belong in QuickBooks. Once you understand how to do the data entry and put everything inside, then we can discuss categorizing, then we can discuss journal entries, et cetera. I'm gonna take a pause now. Um, again, hopefully tomorrow people in touch with the office how to get QuickBooks installed. One second, wait for QuickBooks to respond. Yeah, stop me share. I'm going to address any questions people might have right now at this point. Um, I see there's raised hands in a second. a quick book senior um boom, 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 boom. Okay, I have a question here. In a second, my computer is going to respond. Hopefully, respond in a second.
Okay. Save this presentation. We have a little freeze here, which I'm trying to resolve. Everybody, are you able to log in for a second, not to um, not to lose the what's the call? It's my my thing froze for a second. I, I I stopped the presentation. I just wanted to go through the question and answers. Is this still on? Yeah. Okay, I'm here. So I need I need to shut down my thing and get back in. Okay, so everyone hold tight. Um, Levy is gonna just make an adjustment and it's gonna come back. Everyone just hold tight. Maybe he's going to be coming back in and he's going to spend time helping you troubleshoot any of your installation issues. Uh, for those of you that have a problem, install the QuickBox. Just hold on a minute. Maybe we'll be right back. Okay, everybody, just one more minute. Levy will be. I came back in. Okay, so I don't see any open questions here. So I guess everything wiped out. 
one second here. Um, okay, I see the, the last question, the last uh, question I see over here about coursework or PDF. I said I'm going to email out, I guess we'll send out the few slides I said today about the uh, debits and credits to understand. Also, we're going to send out, out the link. We're going to have to research why it's not working um, as far as the best of my understanding. Those licenses and product numbers were for Accountant Desktop 2020. Um, I'm going to double check tonight. If there's anyone who did get it successfully, please let us know. So at least we know where we stand on that. Um, that was answered live. Right now, I'm only seeing the last two questions. If anyone has a question answered, they want to a uh, raise a hand. I'm going to enable audio. Someone can ask a question. Looking here at the chat. Mm -hmm. Let's see, zoom. Okay, if anyone wants to raise their hand and ask a question, I could enable the... Okay, I have a question. Is the reason why I can't enable the audio under the chat is no enabling audio? Oh, here I could, here, now it's here, I came back. Okay, um, I'm gonna answer the two questions on Q&A typed in, then I'm gonna go to the chat. So the question is, explain the difference between liability and expense. Liability is something not yet paid. The company owes it. Once it's paid, it's, it does, it's not a liability anymore. You satisfy the liability, it doesn't exist. It becomes an expense it's because you paid it. For example, if you borrow $100 from, uh, from uh, when, when, when someone gives you a, a five case of paper, 
twenty dollars each costs a hundred dollars. As long as you didn't pay for the paper, you own the you have the paper, but you owe the company a hundred dollars. Once you pay it, now you have what's called the supply expense, office expense to paper, and there's no more liability. That answers uh, it's your question. Then there's that was done. Okay. If, again, the, regarding the question of downloading, if you, if you downloaded the QuickBooks account in 2020, um, hold tight until tomorrow. We're going to confirm that you have the right software and the matching license for it. Okay. Um, do assets include money paid to you? Um, so the answer is, I said, everything really goes on both sides of the equation. It's called double entry. So if someone gives you $100 that was paid to you, so you received $100 cash. Now, why did you receive the $100 cash? Was it for a sale? Then it's, it's going to automatically be recorded as income. Did you receive it as a loan? Then it's not income, it's a liability. So there are two sides. You have to know when you're entering it, you know, the whole story. You can't just say, I got $100. You have to know why you got the $100. Same thing with accounts receivable. When you send, sell something to someone, so you gave away a product. So did you give a product for, and you wait, you're expecting money, then he owes you account receivables. If you bartered and he provided you a service, so you're not expecting to get money, well, you're going to have to record some type of an expense that you would have had for his service. In exchange for that, you gave him an item or you change services so again you have to know the whole transaction um, account receivables by itself strictly as an asset how you enter it is um, again if, if you're making an invoice quickbooks takes care of it for you it makes a, you you find you attach it to com the customer and the assumption is it's a sale so the account receivables is the asset the sale is the income but if it's done via general journal entry, then you have to know more information. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, I don't know why I, I don't have that. Again, the, the again, I'm getting the same question over and over. It's the 2020 accountant version of the desktop. Give me one second. Let's see any other questions coming in here. How can I make the Zoom app smaller without exiting? There's a, I guess on the right side, there's a minimize button, which you could shrink the screen and it goes down and you could see the rest of your computer. Similar to any application, it has a flat line, which is to minimize and it has like a square where you can Make it larger. 
<laughs> oh, I see only you actually. I don't even see myself. <laughs> okay. I'm the, uh, question answer. Let's see. Is it? Zoom, restore, make it bigger. Open. Let's close the question and answer. Open questions. Um, the, answer to the last question I said when you're entering invoices and you're entering bills, QuickBooks automatically translates whatever it needs to do behind the scenes. Only when you're entering the debits and credits, which we're going to discuss in a different class, is when you have to understand what's going on in the transaction. Um, how can I make the Zoom app smaller without exiting? I think I did that and I just myself too small. The difference between AP and AR is accounts payable, accounts receivables. Accounts payable is what you owe and what you have to pay. Accounts receivables are people owe you and you have to receive. Okay. That is regarding that. Let me see where is We shrink this one. Exit my video. Okay. Um, I believe now. I'm going to try to um, do this voice question here. So, Mr. Schneider. Okay, how about Mrs. Fleischer has a question. Hello? Yes, uh, could you explain what is equity? Equity is what a person owns in a company whether it's the owner or whether it's outside investors. The way a company is funded, uh, two ways, either it borrows money to exist or people put in money and they get a share of the profits. So, you know, the, some people, when they start a company, they're scared to risk their money. They don't want to put in their equity. So they're going to borrow money. So they're going to take on liabilities. They're going to borrow money for a bank, but then, you know, th this is just, you know, for example, uh, the bank, why are they giving you money? Because they're going to get interest, you know, whether it's in the mortgage situation. The company is profitable. The people are lending in money if they feel it's an investment. If you're running a company and you feel that it's going to make money, you want to give it away as little as a profit as possible. So you're going to try to borrow a little bit and put in more money. And, you know, you, you would rather have more to equity for yourself or a controlling part of the company and give away a little bit of the I mean, profit. What is the difference between assets and equity? Meaning they're both what the company- Okay, so, so assets is, is, is everything. The, that means assets is what the company owns. Right. What's, what's in the company, but the company has two parts to it. I see. It's only two parts. It's either liability and the equity. So I can wrote two is equals one plus one. I got Sometimes liabilities will be 50 50. So it's half, then it's one plus one. Sometimes liabilities is zero. A millionaire starts a company. He has his own money. He doesn't need anyone to tell him anything. And he doesn't want to give away any profit. So it's zero liability. Mm -hmm. So then liability is zero. So two plus zero, uh, two equals zero plus two. That means the whole um, value of the company is on his equity. Because originally you said assets are what the company owns. 
Yeah, yeah, the, yeah but the company is really no one. The company is like, is like a name, you know. The, co- the company owns it, uh, you know, it's, but it's a fictitious person. It's, it's not really, you know, if you have uh, incorporated, you know, I don't want to pick, you know, pick an ABZ, uh, you know, XYZ incorporated. Who is that? Right. right? That, what was it on? What it has, yeah, it, legally it owns stuff, but how, how did it get it? It didn't earn it. So it got it a combination of liabilities and, and owner's equity. Okay. okay, so in other words, because originally you had said assets are like, uh, you know, the cash and the supplies. And yeah, yeah, but, but who, who owns but it? It's, but yeah. it's also the liabli- the liabilities. That's what it is. In other words, I understand now. Okay, in other words, the, the day XYZ stops doing business, who's going to get all the cash from the company? Not XYZ. XYZ doesn't exist. It's a way of, of legal protection. So the people who either lent the money to the company, they're gonna they're gonna get their money first. They get the first claim. Next comes the owners. So when you give away all the liability, you pay off the liabilities, and the owners pull out what they own. The company is zero because you you pulled everything out of it. Mm-hmm. So as so the assets are only while you leave the equity and you leave the liabilities unpaid. Once you pay the liabilities and you put, and you pull out the equity, there's nothing left. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Um, try again. Uh, Mrs. Klegsberg had a question. In the meantime, someone's asking here in the Q&A if they can use Excel for all of this. Um, you, can't, you can't really use Excel for, to run your QuickBooks. You could keep track of some expenses in, in Excel, but uh, you, won't, you, won't get the re- you won't be able to do reports. You, the, you'll see as we go in QuickBooks, you can double click and dig down into transactions. Excel is like flat, you can go deeper. Okay, let's see here. Try again. Ms. Mr. Schneider had a question. And otherwise, um, sorry for the, for the trouble and the technical difficulties, which you have my control. So well, again, we'll, we'll ask everyone to be in touch with the office tomorrow. Um, to see what, how we're going to resolve the software installation. And hopefully Wednesday, we'll, we will be dealing directly with, assuming the software is already installed, I'm going to give you a, like three, four steps, which we're going to follow through during class in creating a company file and actually starting to put in transactions, invoice, a couple invoices, customers and service items. Um, This was answered. Um, this was answered. I put it on my... <clears throat> okay, being that I don't see any more questions at like Q&A or I don't see any more hands raised in the chat, so... Everyone have a good night and we'll see you again on Wednesday. 
Um, we'll give a few minutes for the class to start, but usually 8.05, we're, we're shooting to start promptly. All the best.